Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is ETI. We are Emmanuel, the location. We are Emmanuel, the connection. This is the Gaston location. And I just want to take a minute to thank you all for coming out tonight because you could have been doing other things, but you made time for the Lord. So my prayer is that he will bless you guys tonight. Those that's watching on live stream, thank you for tuning in. We declare and we decree you will get what you need from the Lord tonight. So before we get started, let's start off with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight, God, and we say thank you. Thank you for being who you are in our lives. Thank you for leading us and guiding us, and taking care of us. Thank you for taking care of our spiritual leaders, Lord God, and keeping them on the right path and on the right road. So, Father, tonight, we just ask that you will continue, not bless us, but continue to bless us, God, because you are a good, good God, and you've been good to us. So we say thank you tonight. Father, I lift me up as you have chosen me to bring a word to your people, Father God. Let me simply do what you told me to do and go sit down. Father, I thank you right now with tone, to help me with tone and speech and breathing, God. All for your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so tonight, tonight, and I think everyone should have a little green handout sheet. Tonight we're gonna do something a little different. You know, most time people say, don't talk to yourself, don't talk to yourself. Well, I'm the kind that I talk to myself. So tonight, it's not going to be about your brother, your sister, your cousin. It's going to be about you tonight. So the things that we're going to talk about tonight, ponder it for yourself. Not for your husband, not for your wife, but for you. So here we are. We're in almost the end of quarter one, 2023. And I know the first part of January, we were humping, hopping up and down with our goals and our dreams and our vision boards and all the stuff that we said we was going to do, right? I know I was. I had list after list after list. I'm going to do this this year, and I'm going to start that, and I have a vision board, and I got this, this, and this on it. And God was like, he hit me and said, Stacy, where you at with all that? Where you at with your goals and your visions? and your dreams, and the things that God, you know God, put in you to do. Have we dropped the ball? I say me, I dropped the ball. So God said, tonight just bring my people back to the remembrance of them visions, and them goals, and them magnificent things that I told them they can do. I said, okay, God. So I started listening. And I think it was in January, Pastor Cabrera said, I'm here to drop kick y'all. Uh -huh. I'm here to push y'all into y'all destiny. I'm here to provoke you a little bit. Where you at with what God told you to do? Let's go, let's get it, let's go, let's go. That's what Pastor Cabrera told us. I think that was in January. So I'm listening to God. And then Sister Katina came and said, have some self-confidence, know who you are. Know that you are a child of God. And then she said, she had a vision board. And I don't know if you guys remember or not, but Sister Katina said on her vision board was the car she drive now, the place where she work now, the school where she attends now. So I'm listening to God as he's talking to me while I'm preparing this. So I'm like, okay. We have living examples of people that have pressed, that have you know, gone through the tough times to meet their goals to do the things that God told them to do. Girl, why you ain't done it? So I asked myself, I said, Stacy, girl, what's up? Where you at with the stuff that God told you to do? In your little phone with all your notes, how you doing with that? Are you progressing with that? Or have you dropped the ball? Are you moving, crawling? Or you just at a standstill? Y'all know us. I'm going to say me. I start saying stuff like, well, shoot. You know, I got a little bit older, you know, and I just kind of want to chill and relax a little bit. You know, I ain't trying to do all that. And God brought me to Hannah. Anna, she's a prophet in the Bible. 
And it says, and I believe it's down in Luke chapter 2, verse 36 through 37, where she was married for seven years, right? Then her husband, her husband died. So it was about 88, zero, 80 years or so, she was still being effective in the ministry. 80 years. I'm looking at me like, girl, you ain't got a ghost of a chance. You better come on, let's go. And then I thought about, y'all remember Doc Rock told us about his grandma, Ma? Ma started in the ministry when she was six, eight, six or eight years old, and she served until two weeks before she died. So that was over 80 years that this one lady was doing ministry, you know, being singing in a choir, playing music, being a musician, playing. 80 years, why we ain't up doing what God told us to do? That's all I'm saying. So I said, okay. So in my mind, remember, this is self-talk tonight. This is me talking to me. So I invite you to talk to you. Ask yourself, what am I, why am I not doing the things that God told me? And I know it came from God that I should be doing. Well, I said, you know, I don't really want people to talk about me, you know? I'm just trying to stay under the radar. And this is what I heard. Baby, let me tell you something. People are going to talk about you anyway, whether you do good all day, whether you do bad all day. People are still going to be people, and they're going to say what they say. So don't let the opinion of people stop you from doing what God told you to do. I said, okay, all right, you know, I'm pondering it, I'm thinking about it, all right. So then I thought about, well, you know, I utter, you know, I may uh, stutter sometimes, you know, I may, can't, I may not say the right words. And then God took me to Moses. And this part I got to read, this is Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 through 12. And this is when God was calling Moses to do something for him. But Moses pleaded with the Lord, Oh, Lord, I'm not very good with words. I have never even been, I've never been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied and my words get tangled. This is what I like. Then the Lord asked Moses, Who made a person's mouth? Mm. Who decides whether a person speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it I not? Is it not I, the Lord? <clears throat> now go, I will be with you as you speak, and I will instruct you in a way to go. Now, if that's not, okay, God, okay, yeah, I'm starting to, I'm starting to get a little bit encouraged with myself. Okay, God going to be with me. And so if I get nervous or people talk about me, then I'm going to be all right because God with me. And then I thought about, thought about Apostle Wright. And lady, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember Apostle Wright saying he had a speech impediment at one point. And I thought about how many people around the world, not Alabama, the world, this one man blessed because he did what God told him to do. Do y'all remember when Pastor Cabrera told us about she was working in their business at the church and that pastor said, uh, you pastor, you a pastor, right daughter? And he was stunned for two minutes. He was just stunned. That's the effect that Apostle Wright had on people. He did, he said yes to God in spite of his own infirmities. We don't have no excuse. All right, well, we talked about Moses. We talked about Apostle Maurice K. Favor, right? What about Doc Rock? Interesting, I don't know if you guys heard him when he, when he was speaking on Coffee Talk one time. He said in middle school, 
He was afraid to speak in front of people. I was like, wait a minute. Doc Rock? Afraid to speak in front of people? Look at his life now. He went through the process, and we all know he give God the glory for all of his success. So <clears throat> my thing is, if they can do it, Moses can do it. If Ma can do it, where we at? That's all I'm saying. Where we at? I said, okay. Ooh, this is the biggest one I told myself right here. I said, look, girl, I ain't got the money to start no business, okay? Where am I going to get some money from to start a business? I'm just trying to, you know, pay my bills and give my tithe. I ain't got the money. That's what I told myself. You know what the Lord said? Apostle Fitzgerald at uh, the Gaylord, he gave his testimony about their house. And I've never seen it, but I can imagine how awesome it is. Apostle Fitzgerald said, we didn't have the money for the down payment for this house. So you know what they did? They sold a seed into Lady Brenda and Apostle Wright. They in that house today. So you may not have the money to start to do what it is God told you to do, but I bet you got a seed. And then Apostle Wright said, just start with a seed. And God, he said, try me in the area of giving and see if I don't bless you. So you may not have it right now. So a seat. McDonald's about $10 for a meal. Give that $10 as a seat. Lord, I'm going to eat bologna and chips, and I ain't going to McDonald's, but I'm sowing this seed. Got to start. Got to go with you from there. So I'm thinking, okay, all right, girl, you ain't got no excuse. I'm talking to me. There's no reason why I shouldn't be doing, because I know God gave me some ideas. <sighs> All right, I'm going to get going. And then I thought about it. Now, we're not talking about unrealistic goals, like uh, me climbing Mount Everest. I have no desire to climb a mountain. I don't like hiking. I barely like walking. So I'm not talking about unrealistic expectations. I'm talking about things you know God placed in your heart for you to do. And it may not be a business. It may be an enhancement to the ministry. Because, you know, it takes all of us to make Emmanuel the Connection even greater, even better, even higher. God speaks to each and every one of us. So if God has given you a ministry idea, write that thing down. Ask the Lord and submit it. Send him an email. I believe I heard... Doc Rock said, if you have any suggestions about the ministry, send us an email. They're open to it. I said, okay. All right. Huh. Okay. I can't say I ain't got no money to do it. I can't say I ain't got too old. I can't say I'm scared of people. <sighs> All right. I'm going to start doing it. So now, Lord, now what do I do now? I have decided that I'm going to start doing it. I have decided that I'm going to move towards that goal that you taught me to do. God said, what does my word say? So I got his word. Genesis 28 and 15, and behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whether thy goest and will bring thee again into this land, for I will never leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Did God not say, I'm with thee? So, okay, God, you, I'm building momentum. So I hope you guys thinking about your goals and your dreams and your vision board, and you begin to get a little bit momentum. Isaiah 41 and 13, For the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. I don't know about y'all, but when God said he going to hold my right hand, I envision God holding my right hand while I walk through some fearful things. So I'll tell y'all about three weeks ago on a job, I was very fearful. And people said, you know, just get over it. Just get over it. Don't think about something else. Fear, false evidence appearing real. 
it appeared to me like they were really attacking me. And God didn't, he didn't deliver me, but he was right there with me through the whole time. So when you're, as you're beginning to think about the goals and the dreams and the things that you want to do and obstacles come in the way, plant your right hand. God got your right hand. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that acts, hold up. For everyone that acts, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knock, it shall be open. So God said, hey, go pursue that. Go try that. You know, ask some questions. Get with some people that's already doing it. Hey, how you do that? Teach me how to do that. Knock. Begin to knock that dream down. Begin to, begin to work on that goal. That God told you you could do. And then Jeremiah 33 and 3, call unto me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you know not of. Now God said, hold on, call unto me, and I will answer you. So I imagine in my mind when I'm trying to fill out that patent for this idea that I have, uh, that's a lot of red tape. I, I, I don't read Greek. I'm hardly good at English, but I'm trying to figure out what these people are asking me to do, asking me in these questions. Call them. God said, here he is right here. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33 and 3, God, I need you to help me on this application. Okay? James 1 and 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So if you don't know, who you going to go to? You know how the song say, uh, Ghostbusters? Who you going to go to? We're going to go to the one that have all the answers. God don't have some answers. He have every answer for every one of your situation and mine. Remember? Just a little self-talk. So I'm talking to me, as I hope you're talking to you, about why you haven't been pursuing that thing you were so excited about in January. Why you haven't started walking in that thing that God called you to do and kind of just been dormant. I said, okay, Lord. Whew. God, you're coming heavy down on me, Lord. Yeah, because I want you to get this. Because guess what? The more you have, the more you can give. The more you have, the more you can help somebody else. So you increasing and growing, it's not just for you and your family. How nice would it be to be able to give $50,000? Oh my God, I'd be on top of the moon. Not there yet, but I'm believing one day I'm going to be that kind of giver. The things and the ideas that God have placed in me and in you, it's going to bring some increase. It's going to bring some growth financially. So I'm like, oh, okay, God. I need to get on my ball. James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, I think we went over that one. Proverbs 2 and 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. So we're in, in front of the laptop and we're filling out an LLC. What's an LLC, Lord? What do I do here? What do I do here? Ask him. Ask the Holy Spirit. Oh, you put that right there. Oh, you said that right there. Oh, you misspelled that word right there. He, he is that personal to help us with the things that he told us to do. I said, okay, God, I can receive that. Deuteronomy 7 and 13. And he, and he will love thee. God love us. And bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of the land. Thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, the increase of kind, and the flocks. Hold on. God said he going to do that. He didn't say, you know, we had to go out and tour. He said he going to do it. But guess what? We have a part to play. God have a part to play? He going to open some doors. He going to make some things happen for us. Some situations going to come our way. It may take a little work, but it's going to cause growth and increase. So are we... Are we willing or 
We want to be Humpty Dumpty. Just sit on your number. That's all I'm saying. All right. John 15 and 8. Hence is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So you should be my disciples. Hold on, wait now. So God said, as I'm doing these things he's called me to do, and he's giving me increase, I'm glorifying him? Oh, we done got it twisted. We thought, you know, God don't get no glory in uh, us. He don't get no glory in, okay, girl, you bad. It ain't just about them shoes you got on, girl. It ain't about that dress. It's something about you, girl. It's something I like you. I could, we could be sisters. That, the way that you carry yourself will glorify God. I'm like, okay, God, I hear you. So I'm talking to me. I'm thinking to me, okay, God, I got to get going. I'm going to get going. You done told me I can do it. You done told me you're with me. And what really pierced my heart is that you said you hold me by my right hand, and you're going to walk with me. <sighs> okay, God, I'm going to stretch on out there. But hold on. Mm-mm. We're not done yet. So Psalms 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength and very present help in time of trouble. So let's not get it twisted. We know that the enemy ain't just going to hand us stuff. You know, we know that opposition may come. Nine times out of ten, it will come. But we're not going to sweat. We're not going to trip. Okay, God. I see this big obstacle in my way. But I'm going to run to your little word. And you said you're going to hold my right hand. So, God, how we go through this? What do I do? And God said, X. And I'll, I'll give it to you. I give you wisdom. Oh, God, it's so awesome, y'all. I just want to say thank you, Lord. There's nothing that we can endeavor and do and you not be with us. Oh, we give you praise. Isaiah 41 to 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with my right hand of righteousness. God said, don't fear. And remember, this is you talking to you. So I'm talking to me. So when I'm talking to me, I'm like, girl, don't you be fearful. And what them emails say, girl, don't you be fearful of losing your job. Because God said, if a man don't work, neither shall they eat. So God, I need you to help me on this job. Number one, to bring you glory. And number two, to feed me because I like to eat. Okay? God said, don't fear. So when I was going through what I was going through in my job, he didn't deliver me, but he was with me every step of the way. So I get a bad email, and I say to myself, God has not given me a spirit of fear, the power of love, and a sound mind, and I'm going to get this right. I may messed up, but I'm going to get it right, and eventually I did. So some things God not going to deliver us from. We just got to go through those things. Philippians 4 and 6, be careful for nothing. I love this. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. In other words, God said, don't worry. Don't be up worried 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning trying to figure this out, trying to figure that out. Don't worry about that prayer about it. I remember Doc Rock said, he said, uh, God up, so I'm going to sleep. Go on and go to sleep. It's an issue, concern, whatever it is, whatever you're facing, pray about it. Give that thing to God. Let him handle that. He's going to handle that situation to your favor because he loves you. And then when you get on the other side, you'll be like, dang, why was I worrying about that? Why was I toiling about that thing? Why was I fearful about this or that? God is right there with us. What can't we do if we put our minds to it? Okay? Psalms 34 and 4. <laughs> I sought the Lord and he heard me. And deliver me from what? All my fears. When God's like, he delivered me from all my fears. I look back, y'all, just about yesterday. I was like, why was I scared of that? Why was I scared of this situation? I know how to do this. I've been doing this for quite a while. Where is my confidence? Where is my self-confidence in me? So I had to walk through that. And now, I'm like, okay, bring it on. 
whatever it is, God, how we do this? Y'all remember Doc, Doc, Doc Rock told a story when he was in, I think Detroit, and the machine broke down, and nobody knew how to fix it. And he went in the corner, he said, God, I need you. I need you to tell me how to fix this machine. He went back in, he told the guy, try this, and the machine worked. That's how God is with us. If we acknowledge him, if we put him first, if we ask in him, we're doing it for him, not for our own glory. He'll help us do it all. And then he'll get the glory. And you know, one thing I love about God, let me tell you what I love about God. Just one thing, he'll let you shine and he'll still be getting the glory. Because while he letting you shine, you letting him shine. Like, God, I thank you. There is no way I could have thought about that. There is no way I could have done that. It's all you, God. So I thank you. Huh. So we're like, okay. I'm getting a little motivated now. I'm thinking, all right, God with me. You know, he holding my hand as I walk through this process. So I'm filling out these forms. LLC. Okay. Not sure that I needed that, but okay. The state of Alabama said you need an LLC. Okay. We're going to fill it out. Oh, how much it costs? Okay, let me sow this seed right here. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting it done. We're moving in the right direction. We're not stagnant. We're not being still. We're not throwing them. Man, I'll do that next year. I don't even feel like doing that. Oh, I just want to relax. I just want to chill out. I said, no, nah, now is not the time to chill out and relax. Because y'all know why? People need God that's in us in our everyday life. People are hurting. People are broken. People uh, want to take their own lives. We have the antidote. We have the answer, and that's Jesus. Every day, all day. So I encourage you, as you're going through your day, you know, believe uh, No Bad Days talks about on a Tuesday where Dr. Rogers blessed somebody on a Tuesday. I encourage you to start. I I like that. I'm going to start doing that. I'm just going to go around just blessing people when, how I can. Now, it may be 50 cents. It may be $5. I don't know. But I'm going to be a blessing to somebody else because people need it. Let me tell you what I love. I love to see girls with purple hair and green hair. You know, it be dyed all these colors. I'm like, girl, that looks so cute on you. What am I doing? I'm trying to make a connection with them. I'm trying to t open the door, get it, a foot in the door to tell them about Jesus, that he loves you no matter what color your hair is, because that's how he is. Amen. Okay, I'm going to get off that soapbox. <sighs> Woo. Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to to his purpose. So when the thing that we don't desire happens, happens, it's working for our good. I didn't desire to get no divorce way back then, but it worked for my good because he's no longer here. Rest his soul. But it worked, God used everything to work for our, he wastes nothing. I think Pastor Wright said that he wastes nothing. So, you know, don't look at me like, man, I fail. Man, they rejected my application. Dang it, I ain't get that job. You learned something. You updated your resume. Um, maybe made some contacts with some new people. We never fail. We learn or we grow. But we, ne we are we lunch leaders. Each and every one of us in here, we are a leader. Even if you're a leader of one, just you. So don't get the job. Feelings hurt. I got two applications in now for, for a couple positions. One of them, I'm like, oh, God, give me that job right there. Ooh, woo. Barely. I may have a few qualifications, but I'm going to need God on this one. It's a real sexy job, you know. I'm going to need God. And the other one's like, you know, I can do that. It may not be as much as a challenge, but I'm not afraid of a challenge. I'm not afraid to say, man, I don't know how to do that. How you do that? But I know my trust is in the Lord. So whether I get it or I don't. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop because I didn't get it. I ain't going to tuck my tail between my legs and run on. We can't do it. Too much to do in this hour. Young people, you know, 
Young people need us so bad. Just everyday common wisdom. Because that's talk. And they think they know everything. But when you get to the nitty gritty, they're going to listen to what you're saying then. Like, dog, mama said that. I should have listened to her. So, so be open. Don't ever count your kids out. I don't know if you guys heard uh, Doc Rock and Pastor Brandon yesterday. Man, what a blessing. Brother Brandon said, Pastor Brandon said, I, I strive for the, the ones that the kids that the parents done gave up on. Them the ones that I want. I was like, look at his passion, his desire. You can't tell that man that he ain't going to reach some people. He ain't going to reach some kids. That's his hunger. That's his desire. God has put that same type of desire in us to do something. It may not be, you know, ministry towards kids. It may be you may can cook well. You know, some of us would enjoy a nice cookbook. It don't have to be something big and elaborate, you know. Uh, Stacy's 10 favorite recipes. And then you tell me step by step how to do it. Put a prayer in there for me. Stacy. don't put too much salt in there. That sugar, you need salt. So that, you know, every so often I want to cook. I get that urge or that desire. Not all the time but every so often. So if you're gifted in cooking, baking, make a book, make a recipe book. It don't have to be all elaborate, you know, just share, because some of us need good recipes. Now, I can do Jeffrey mix pretty good. I got that Jeffrey mix down. But what about homemade cornbread? If I make my kids homemade cornbread, they'll be like, girl, what's this? Why? They've always had Jeffrey mix. But, but my mama raised me a homemade cornbread. So I would love a good homemade cornbread recipe. Just a thought. Here we go. Joshua 1 and 9. Woo, woo. This one right here hit hard. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Whatsoever ever thy goest. What can we do, y'all? God done told us over and over again, starting in January, Pastor Cabrera said, hey, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get started. What, your, what are your dreams? What are your goals? Get, write them down. Get them on a vision board. Let's get them. Let's go. So Tina told us, hey, be confident in what God told you to do. Let's get it. Let's go. You see, God did it for me. He'll do it for you too. God's not a respecter person, right? And then, here come God telling me, encourage the people. Pick that thing back up. And I'm like, well, you know, God, who, 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 I'm just me. No, ma'am, you my vocal cords tonight. You what I want to tell the people tonight. I said, okay, God. So I had to push timidness. I had to push fear. I had to push doubt. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to do what you told me to do, and I'm going to go sit down. So I want to encourage you tonight. Think about just that one thing. Ooh, do we have time to do this exercise? Sister Katina, I don't know what time we got. But I wanted to do this exercise, right? Think about one thing. It can be big. It can be small. Think about that one thing. Close your eyes. Ain't nobody going to steal our purses. The door's closed. <laughs> Think about that one thing that you want to do. You know it's from God. He told you to do it. You've been procrastinating. Mm. You've been putting it off. You've been putting it on the back burner because all this other stuff going on. Now see it on the canvas of your imagination that you're getting that thing done. You're reaching that goal. You're getting that application filled out. Ooh, you have a job, you have a, a des uh, idea for the ministry that's going to really help a certain area. I see you writing it, writing it up. Well, Dr. Rock, I like to add this to the ministry, and this is why. And God gave it to me like this, and I just want to submit it to you. Ooh, my Lord. Now think about Dr. Rock right now. Okay, you lead that. You've increased the ministry right there. Think about that application getting approved. Blah blah blah. LLC established in the state of Alabama. <gasps> I'm going to tell y'all, 
That's a beautiful thing. So, okay, come on back. Come on back. Come on, really, really back. <sighs> Feel a little bit better, like, yeah. Well, I'm going to get, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go out there and get that done. You watching live streaming, go do it. Go fulfill your purpose that God told you to do. Start that business. Um, start that ministry idea. Hey, what's holding you back? The only thing holding you back is you. So I said, God, now help us now. So we're, gonna, we're going to be in agreement that, okay, I'm going to start moving in that direction. No matter what obstacles I face, no matter what comes my way, I'm not going to be fearful. I'm going to do that thing that I know God told me to do. God told me to do something about two years ago. I haven't done it yet. I tried it. I dipped a little bit, and I dipped a little bit, but I haven't finished it. And God said, not this year. So I'm asking you guys, hold me accountable for the two things that God has told me to do. Right about August, check in. Let's, let's hold each other accountable. Stacey, where you at with that? You ain't manifested that thing yet. What you taking so long for? You know what God said in his word. Let's hold each other accountable. Because sometimes it helps to have an accountability partner. I was going somewhere. And I was like, hey, y'all. I'm going to be so and so and so. so. Katina was like, hold up. Who you going with? Who, who, he, who he is? Accountability. So I sat and I explained to her where I was going and who I was going with. Accountability. That goes a long way. Cell groups. I'll tell you guys. I don't know if you're part of Connect Group or not. If you are not, plug in. We have, our is called single, but it's single and married. And when I tell y'all, we talk about mm, everything. We talk about everything. And it's so refreshing that I can see a sister that's married because I want to be married one day. And she's showing, she's telling me real expectations to having a husband. Because, you know, when you're single, you think it's going to be all roses and everything's going to be good. And, you know, he wake up, his breath going to be smelling all good, you know. It's going to be great. No, that ain't how marriage works. He may get on your last nerve. He may disappoint you. I mean, they just brung it real. And I needed that. I needed to know the truth of how some marriages are. You know, some of them are really, really good. Some of them are really, really not good. But I love that we have that connection. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you're not a part of uh, cell group, join in. If you need one, hey, holler at me. You know, I got some space available. And another thing, before I close out tonight, I wanted to encourage you guys. I know we probably all have No Bad Days, the book, right? I'm assuming we all read the book. So really apply it is what I ask you tonight. Because like I said before, people are hurting and they need a smile. I don't know if I told y'all, I was real, real going through one day. And I walked through, a, I was walking in the store and the man held the door open for me. And I almost cried in tears. The little gesture of holding the door open for me. That said, hey, you're valuable. Hey, you a lady, let me let you in first. Those small things, you don't know how you can touch someone's life. So, we're gonna finish out Proverbs 3, five and six. As you're doing your things that God has told you to do, as you're preparing, okay, I know I, have, I might have to fight, but that's okay, I don't mind fighting because I know I got the winner with me. So God and me, we win every time. We the majority. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And then God just dropped something in me. Some things may not be for you to do. Some ministries may not, you know, that may not be your calling. I'll tell you this. I can work in children's church any day of the week. But right here, okay, God, you're stretching me. So if it's, don't, you can cry. If it's not, if it's something in your heart and you really want to do, and God said no, 
You can't do it. You can't do it. Because he ain't going to put his grace on it. When he put his grace on a thing, it's like you're just flowing through that. It's with ease. So if he say no, I'm sorry. I'll give you a hug, but you can't do it. So that is what I have for tonight. Um, not sure what time we have, but I never want to close out without offering salvation. Because I don't assume that everyone, I ain't talking about y'all in here, y'all safe on the camera. Don't assume everyone watching is saved. So if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't get the benefits that we just talked about. You don't get those benefits. But if you want those benefits, and you've been saying to yourself, self, I really want to get saved. I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about an intimate, personal relationship with God. If you want to say, hey, Lord, I confess I'm a sinner, but I believe Jesus is your son, and I believe you rose him from the dead, and based on your word, I am saved. So let's give it up tonight for everyone that we believe that's watching God saved. Woohoo! Amen. Amen. So, in closing, I want to say I miss y'all. I know I hadn't been around, but that's okay. I've been doing what God told me to do. I miss being at home. I love y'all, each and every one of y'all, but most importantly, God loves you. And his love will never leave you, no matter where you are. He was always there with us. Why? He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. So he with you in the car wash. He with you in the bathroom. He with you at Walmart. So don't cuss the people out. That was for me. That was for me. Anyhow, so we're going to close out tonight. Thank you guys for coming. Let's finish with the word of prayer. Oh, God, we thank you. You're so incredible. You're so awesome. You're so magnificent. We thank you, Father, for being in the midst of us. Thank you for encouraging us to pick up our goals and dreams. Pick up our vision board. Let's get going with what you call us to do. We declare and decree everyone will make it home safe tonight. We speak blessings over every home that's represented. We declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We declare healing is the children's bread. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for taking care of our households. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.